All right, man, peace. So growing up in New York City and watching the New York Knicks on television, one of their commentators is a former basketball legend by the name of Walt Clyde Frazier. And one of his more famous sayings is that the regular season is where you make your name and the playoffs is where you make your fame. Unfortunately, someone has never told this to Mr. Carl Anthony Towns because he seems to believe that as one of the NBA's up and coming young superstars, that he can just diddy bop his way through the first round of the playoffs, averaging five points and seven rebounds a game. And that somehow is not going to hurt his legacy or hurt his stock down the line. At the end of the day, the city of Minneapolis is looking to him to lead their franchise for the next 10 to 12 years. And if he does not understand that, that is going to hurt him for the rest of his career and for the rest of his life because he's going to look back and say, I should have played harder. So hopefully in tonight's upcoming game three, he decides to commit himself and show out. And at the very least, if you're going to get gunned down, make sure that you have your own guns on you and that there are no bullets left in the chamber. So that brings us to this segment right here where Mr. Tracy McGrady, an NBA Hall of Famer himself, is going to make a very stark and very harsh but very true criticism of Mr. Carl Anthony Towns play in the first two games of the season. So let's see what he has to say. I do want to talk about the Wolf team, though, because Carl Anthony Towns posting just five points, didn't score after the first quarter. Remember all the talk going in? He's got to be more active. He's got to demand the ball. Here's how he responded to a question about playoff pressure. Now, before they go to Carl Anthony Towns' response to the question about playoff pressure, let me say this. It's very clear that the Minnesota Timberwolves have a very bad mix of players. Certain teams have too many of the same type of players, and you see them throughout the NBA. Milwaukee, the Wizards, Minnesota. These are teams that have a very bad mix, and you also have teams that have a very good mix. Right now, the New Orleans Pelicans have a great mix. They have 60 win-level talent and synergy. The Philadelphia 76ers have 60 win-level talent and synergy right now. You can see it. There are certain teams that don't hit their stride until the last month of the season heading into the playoffs, and they're a better team than their record shows. Those two teams are better than their record shows. Once again, the New Orleans Pelicans are going to be a problem for the Golden State Warriors if Steph Curry does not play from game one. They may even take out their pound of flesh if Steph Curry plays. We'll see what happens with that, but in regards to Mr. Carl Anthony Towns, he's going to have to step his game up, period. And I know that it's going to be difficult because he does not seem to have an alpha male personality. Or maybe he just doesn't feel like it's the right place and time to assert himself. And there just seem to be layers in between himself and reaching his potential on that, on that franchise. Because they have more established name players on that team. And their coach is a big name coach. Even though I don't understand why he is for the life of me. But he needs to be one of those guys in the locker room that breaks the chalkboard and lets them niggas know, look, this is my team. Get out of my way. I'm going to get 25 shots by hook or by crook. If you don't like it, kick rocks. That's that. Andrew Wiggins, Jimmy Butler, Jamal Crawford, give me the ball. Jeff Teague, your punk ass better learn how to feed the post, man. Period. That's what top-notch, high-level Hall of Fame big men have always done, and he's going to have to do that. He's going to have to find his manhood. But let's let him answer this question. After the game. All right, just go out here and I just try to find ways to win. I'm not looking for statistics and all that hype and glory and all that BS that does not, you know, I'm here for winning the dubs. Now, did you hear what Carl Anthony Towns said? He said he's not out there for hype and glory. He's just trying to win. Well, bro, you're not playing in a winning manner right now. You're not being assertive. You're not being assertive. You're not conducting yourself like the alpha that you're supposed to be. And unfortunately, Carl Anthony Towns has fallen down the quote-unquote nice guy rabbit hole. He wants to be a nice guy. Um, brothers, I say this all the time. Get rid of the nice guy shit. Be respectful. To the best of your ability, be honorable. That nice guy shit, that's for the birds, man. You have to be real with other people. The only way that you can do that is to be real with yourself. Carl Anthony Towns needs to look himself in the mirror and ask himself who he is and who he wants to be. Shots, whatever the case may be, 
five shots, you know, one shot, no shots, whatever the case is, I got to do for us to win. He says that if it takes 30 shots, if that's what he has to do for them to win, then that's what he has to do. Let me also say this. Let, let me give a little bit of credit to the Houston Rockets and their defensive game plan. They're doubling, tripling down on Carl Anthony Towns. Why are they doing that? Because they understand that the Minnesota Timberwolves do not pass the ball well. And you're seeing that with many of these teams in the playoffs that don't pass the ball well, they're going down 0-2, 0-3, like the Portland Trail Blazers, the Minnesota Timberwolves. There's a certain style of play that can be successful in the regular season, depending on the amount of talent that you have on your team. But you cannot carry that style of play into the postseason because teams game plan against what you do if all you do is feed your successful players. You have to confuse them. You have to have off the ball player movement. You have to have weak side player movement. Things of that nature. Cutting to the basket. That will confuse your opponent. Minnesota does not have that. They, they only want to go one on one. Portland only wants to go one on one. Milwaukee oftentimes only wants to go one on one. They play with a little more verb in game three, so they were able to defeat the Boston Celtics. That series is going to be very close. That's why I say with many of these series, I want to see game three. Even this series with Minnesota and Houston, I want to see game three. I want to see how they come out. But Carl Anthony Towns has to understand the gravity of what he's going through right now because they're going to look back at his initial playoff performances. And he's not going to be able to say, well, I was young, I was inexperienced. They're going to say, Carl Anthony Towns, you average eight and a half points and eight and a half rebounds a game your first time in the playoffs you're not a big time player that's what they're going to say and i hope that he grasps that <laughs> put down your tea tea mac and speak hey. because you were making a lot of gestures during that sound bite listen here man i love carl anthony towns so do i He's a, def- a well-talented player in our league. Yes, extremely talented. I agree with you, T-Mac, but I also see a big butt coming. Go ahead. But right now, in these first two games, I'm not saying he is. I'm saying Carl Anthony Towns is playing soft. I agree with you, bro. I agree with you. He's playing soft. That's why I say he's playing like a kitty cat. I said, damn, no wonder, no wonder he has that nickname, cat. He's playing like a pussy. I mean, shit. If I'm the Houston Rockets, I might just have a bowl of milk out there at center court right before the first tip-off. Say, here you go. Because we know you're not going to be a problem tonight. <laughs> just, just lick up that bowl of milk and take your ass over there back to the bench and scratch that pole. He's being beat up by Clint Capella. He's taking him out of his game. I don't know if he's in his head, but right now he is playing soft basketball for him. I agree. I think a lot of things are in his head. I think that his coach is in his head, too. That's the wrong coach for that team. That's the wrong coach for this modern NBA. For him to have five points in the first quarter and don't score anymore, you are the best player on this team. You have to demand the ball. I don't care if you shoot the ball 20, 25 times. Your team won't be competitive if you play like this. Y'all going to get swept out of Minnesota. Absolutely, and I've been saying that since the middle of the season. In order for the Minnesota Timberwolves to be the best versions of themselves, they have to center their offense around Carl Anthony Towns. They have to require that he get at least 15 touches in the low post. Look at how Joel Embiid plays. Look at how Anthony Davis is playing. Carl Anthony Towns has to understand that if he wants his name to be mentioned amongst the names of the top players in the NBA at the big man position, He has to put up big numbers in the playoffs when it counts. Anthony Davis has only been in seven playoff games. He's averaging well over 30 points a game or a little bit over 30 points a game, pardon me. But he's shown up individually. It's just that prior to this season, he has not been able to win a game. And I'm going to get off his back. I'm going to leave him alone because he has performed like an ace. I give him credit. Joel Embiid has shown that he's a dog on both offense and defense. Carl Anthony Towns has to step it up. I don't know if he has to get in the weight room in the offseason. It looks like he's getting pushed off his box. Um, Clint Capella, Nene, they seem to be physically intimidating him. I'm not quite sure what's going on with Carl Anthony Towns, but he has to get it together because his team needs him. And that's a 
it's not he. You saw it in there, heard in the soundbite. He mentioned, "Oh, I don't play for glory or stats," and that's not what you're talking. All that is bullshit. All that is excuse making for the media. Oh well, I only have five points because I'm not a stat guy. Bullshit. You have five points because you're playing like a kitty cat. Talking about and by the way, that distinction you you just made. <laughs> Stop that. That distinction. That's what I'm saying. Start of game three. Clint Capella might be waiting for him in the paint. I'm like, here, kitty, 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 kitty. Yeah, it's pretty good. The way that the shoulders go, they match, right? That's nice. Um, the distinction you made, I think, is important. You're saying that because you don't think he's a soft player. No. So you think he's got the capability. You've I've, seen him. I've seen it. I've seen it all season long. Like, Let me say this. This is Carl Anthony Towns' first appearance in the playoffs. There are certain players that you think are not soft because they're playing at a regular season level of intensity and then the playoffs gets to be a little bit too much everyone is not built for those pressurized moments I'm not going to say that Carl Anthony Towns is one of those guys but he has two more games to show me that the first two games were a mirage like I, this guy is one of our young and up and coming great talents in our league he is not showing that Th these last two I don't know I don't know who that is <laughs> Like we used to say, like we said last year, like who was that in, in that Rocket series uh, last year? Yeah, James Harden when somebody turned his switch off. Last year, James Harden game six. Like who was that guy? Who is this dude? Yeah. Like you, bro, you have a mismatch every single night. These guys are switching pick and rolls. Yeah, but you know what? Their offense is very unimaginative. They have to get him down in the low box. They're giving him the ball in positions where it's not going to be a high level of proficiency in his scoring attempts. He has to get down a low box, give him the basketball, let him get comfortable with some jump hooks, some mid-range jump shots. They keep kicking out to him for three from, from the corner. It's like, come on, let, let's use a little bit more wherewithal than that. Get your butt on the block and cause havoc. Well, again, Please. I will point out, I said this all week, this is his first playoff season. No, Rachel, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear it either. I don't want to hear it either. You're supposed to be the frontline guy for your squad. You have to show up. It'd be one thing if th these were his first two playoff games and he was averaging 18 and a half a game and in the regular season he averaged 23 or 24 a game. Then you could say, okay, maybe he has the playoff jitters. But five points a game, come on. That. Well, the reason why I was nineteen, I was nineteen, twenty years you old. You also were special. This was about to say. He's you, special. You, you are special. Exactly. Where's that Hall of Fame ring, man? He's special. You, you are special. This guy's not special. special. No, I'm saying he. The, my point is, I'm sitting here. I spent the first ten minutes of the show praising Donovan Mitchell for being such a heady rookie because it isn't. Yeah, but you know what? Donovan Mitchell's also a dog. He's a dog with a good head on his shoulders. Donovan Mitchell, right now has a higher basketball IQ than Russell Westbrook has ever had. It is unusual. What we are seeing from Carl Anthony Towns is what we would more usually see from a rookie in his first playoff series. No. You were also I mean, special. No, no, he, no. No. With all due respect to Carl Anthony Towns, he can't get that type of a pass. This broad is trying to make all type of excuses for him. If you're a top flight level player or athlete in any sport, one would expect that in the most highly pressurized situations, that you would show some type of verb, some type of, of aggressiveness, show that you wanted it. He has not shown that thus far. We can go through the history of the NBA, all the great rookies that have come through the NBA. In their first playoff opportunities, they shined. They did well. Whether it was Shaq or Tim Duncan or, or whoever, whoever it was when they finally made the playoffs, they shined. I'm not even going to mention players like Michael Jordan or Magic or Larry Bird or Wilt, etc. That, that's on a whole other level. But come on, point being is this, Carl Anthony Towns has to do better. Can't get away with that. Like, this guy is too talented, he's too good for that. Like, you, you're not going to have a great regular season, then you get to the playoffs, and this is showing. No, you have to come to play. You are the best player on his team. They look for you to lead. Dang it, go out there and do that. Right, but do they really look to him to lead, though? That's my question, T-Mac. Sometimes the performance that a player has out on the court is a reflection of his own self-image in regards to how he views his role to be in the locker room. He could be the most talented guy on the team, but he could be getting sunned in that locker room. He may be intimidated 
at approaching other players in that locker room because he may feel that they have more tenure than him. That's why I stated in a previous video, that whole Jimmy Butler dynamic, that's not good for his growth or Andrew Wiggins' growth. The problem is that Andrew Wiggins sees himself as a leader and he's not. He doesn't have an alpha personality. And then on top of that, their point guard, Jeff Teague, can't make a pass. So they have a lot of problems. Rondo would be perfect for that team. Rondo would have been perfect for that team. Is, is Tibbs talking in your earpiece? Because I'm pretty sure that's all. Nah, man, I, I'm saying I, I, because I expect more out of him, and he's not showing that. I expect more, and he should give more for his team. Well, right now, he's playing soft. At least a couple more. I agree. I agree. And let me say this. You know, when you have love for someone, when you care about them, sometimes you have to be very harsh with them. Sometimes people may listen to my videos and think that what I'm saying is harsh in regards to a certain topic or a certain issue. But like I always state, my channel is geared towards the so-called black man and the so-called black man right now is at the very bottom. And overall, the overall psyche of the so-called black man is borderline delusional. So sometimes you have to say things that may be considered harsh to people who are in their own world to help them understand what their actual station is so that they can, under, they can realize that and try to rise up out of that station, out of that delusion. That's the point. When you care about someone, that's what you do. And Tracy McGrady is doing that with Carl Anthony Towns because he clearly is concerned about him and understands that when people look back at Carl Anthony Towns' first playoff performance and if they see seven points a game, eight rebounds a game, he's never going to be able to move past that. It's one thing to lose. It's another thing to lose like a loser. It's like that scene in Karate Kid Part 1 when, of course, Daniel LaRusso gets his leg hurt and he's in the back locker room with Mr. Miyagi and he wants Mr. Miyagi to heal him just so that the boys that were bullying him can understand that they didn't get the best of him. They may have beat him, but they didn't get the best of him. Carl Anthony Towns does not seem to understand or grasp that right now he can play the super humble nice guy role. But 10 years from now, 12 years from now, if and when he still has not won anything in the NBA, people are going to hold this performance against him if he doesn't step it up. A couple more games left to say. I want to get to the series. So big but anyway, that's it on that. I agree with your team, Matt. Sometimes you have to be hard with brothers to make them wake up and understand exactly what's going on around them so that they can pick it up. But anyway, peace.